um, as you understand them and just sign an initial and then uh, if you read the bottom and agree to talk to us, you sign each of them. as you understand them, yes. Yeah, so first one, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against you in court or other proceedings. You have the right to consult with an attorney before making any statement or answering any questions, and you may have him or her present with you during questioning. You may have an attorney appointed to you to represent you if you cannot afford one or otherwise obtain one. Um, if you decide to answer any questions now with or without a lawyer, you have the right to stop questioning at any time or to stop questioning for the purpose of consulting a lawyer. So my only question is, am I being charged with something? No, we're just interviewing. Yeah. I thought that's what I'm, that's what I'm, like. <laughs> but I'm, not, it's, I'm not worried because I'm not, yeah. We, we have to do our job at, yeah, no, just tell me that at advising you your rights right, because this now. is an investigation. Just the formality. You have to do, do it. You're here. You we do appreciate it. You do it. What is today? It is the 21st of October. Oh. Long day? Well, what's interesting, not to digress on some commentary here, is that we've done this for two weeks and we did it the right way every day. Every day. You're on a set, you rehearse, they bring you what's called a cold gun. The gun is either completely empty, the chambers, or there is a cosmetic piece. So, for example, if you're the camera, and this is going to sound silly and specific, but if I'm pointing the gun close to the camera, you want to see into the cylinder that there's material in there, mm -hmm. cosmetic material. So those rounds are cosmetic rounds. Right. They put them in, and you rehearse, or <coughs> even in a shot when you don't fire. Mm -hmm. I pull the gun, and you see there's some material inside the cylinder. They'd hand me a cold gun, no charges. They always hand you a cold gun with nothing in it to rehearse. And then, <clears throat> when you shoot, and if you are shooting loads that are flash loads, and they're usually in three denominations, quarter, half, or full load now, so that the flash is bright, and the sound is loud, louder, loudest. Full load is loudest. So if you're outside, you want a full load bang, or a loud sound, or inside, you feel a quarter load. Right before you shoot, everyone preps, crew puts the earplugs in, so put headphones on, the camera's there, very often there's a loose sight screen, but you're the camera operator and there's the camera, so I should always shoot off camera, you never shoot into the lens, and you shoot and there's a flash and a sound. Now, I went to lunch, she disarmed me, I sat she down, she being uh, Hannah, the, Hannah. the armaments person. I, when she was always handling the guns, 99% of the time. So I would, uh, if I had a cosmetic rifle with no rounds, I'd hand it to one of her assistants. I'm sitting there, she disarms me, we go to lunch, we come back to lunch, and they hand me the, the revolver, the, the Colt. And they, I just like so her, mean, it's hand, hand again. They, they arm me, okay. and you're assuming, as we've done every time, that it's a cold gun for the rehearsal. And I put the, the, the gag in the shot, you're the camera, because I have a coat, and I have a holster, and I pull the coat over, and I kind of cut my hands like I folded my hands. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to slowly sneak the revolver, the, the Colt, out and turn and shoot these other guys or try to shoot them. I take the coat over the thing, I hear the camera's there. I believe, my recollection is she was there, turned a bit, like talking to him. So her, I think she was hitting the right armpit. But this is all I know, and that is that I take the gun out in the rehearsal, he wants it very dramatic and very slow. I'm trying to sneak up on them. I take the gun out, and as I take, as I guess it clears, as the barrel clears, all the turn and cock the gun over here. I turn and cock the gun. The gun goes off. Okay. It's supposed to be a cold gun. Nothing, no flash charges. Nothing. Now, this is a puzzle to me, and this is making me very emotional now. You know, but in my time, and I'm older now, but when I was younger and I was shooting guns in the film, I've never seen a theatrical flash round where the material went through someone's armpit, came out their body, and hit somebody else in the shoulder. Yeah. I'm wondering if your department is prepared to go find out what comes out of his shoulder surgically. Is that a live round? That's what we are actually looking is at. Is that a live? Because I don't, it doesn't make any sense otherwise. It, yeah. It's and when the armpit comes out, her shoulder goes into his shoulder, and he just told me on the phone, I talked to Joel, he said, they showed me the x-ray, and the shape of the thing in my shoulder is the shape of a bullet. Now, all the rounds, I was told, you need to verify, I think this is an important note, they take the gun, they enter the gun, and all the rounds that are in there were either dummy rounds, no flash, cold rounds, or rounds with a flash in the rehearsal. There should have been nothing. It should have been a cold gun 
with no rounds inside or dummy rounds, cosmetic rounds, no flash. I take the gun out slowly, I turn, I cock the pistol, bang, it goes up. She hits the ground. She goes down. He goes down, screaming. He's like, Jesus Christ. He, and I'm going. And I thought that maybe sometimes the wadding can come out if you're close and you get a burn. Two actors who killed themselves with guns, with theatrical guns, John Eric Hexum and Brandon Lee, mm -hmm. they put the live round in. And I'm told even with the flash powder, you can cause contusions and you can do a blame, brain bleed and die, which both of them died. Right. I think with Brandon Lee, there was a, 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 a piece of material lodged in the thing that shot from the or something. Yeah. I don't remember it vividly, but my point is, I've been doing this, I, I shot enough guns in my day in movies, I've never seen this before. Or a flash round, but from my understanding is, may I borrow your pen for a minute? Of course, you can borrow it. My, my understanding is that in a, in a, in a bullet, you know, here's the thing with the pin, and here's the, the, the bullet itself. And now here, when you have a cosmetic round, no flash, no nothing, they drill a hole in the side of the brass to show, to signify that it's a cosmetic round. There's nothing in there. There's no powder. And when, but when you, have a, when you have a flash round, and, you have, and, there's, and there's stuff in there, wadding and powder, to make the charge. This material here, that is the bullet, is made of a clay or some material that just disintegrates. So what you have is bang, and you see the flash go bang, and you hear the sound, but nothing, there's no projectile. Mm -hmm. And what I'm curious about is what came out of that bullet that went through her body and into his shoulder? That's pretty powerful. I, 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 I've never heard of it. Now, some people say <coughs> you can lodge material in the barrel accidentally, a rock, something, that happens. Which is why she, every time we've done this, I'm here to tell you, to testify that every time we've done this, she's done it right. She cleaned the barrel. Made sure nothing was lodged in there. We went hot when they were ready. You always announce, we're going hot. Crew gets ready. And then all of a sudden, you're the camera, and I shoot away from you. I sit there, I'm like, bang, bang, bang. And flashes are coming out, and we shoot the rounds. She cleans the barrel every time, and she checks that the rounds are all cosmetic rounds, for the, or nothing in the chamber for the rehearsal. She hands me the gun. I'm assuming she's done it the right way. She's done it the last two weeks. I put it in the holster. I pull it out slow. We're rehearsing. I'm not filming anything. I pull it out slow, turn, cock the pistol, bang, it goes up, and she hits the ground. And then he starts screaming. And I'm thinking, in a flash round, I could see maybe if there was wadding or there's some stuff that, that, that hot, and maybe it hit you and burned you. As they say sometimes mm -hmm. that happens. But remember, we're rehearsing, so no one's protected. So it's all supposed to be this one, cosmetic one. Or, or, nothing. or nothing. For the rehearsal, the gun is normally empty. Mm -hmm. But my point is, is that they were standing in positions they wouldn't ordinarily be in because they assumed it was an empty, cold gun. We weren't shooting, we were rehearsing, that's a vital difference. So if she's here, if the camera's here, and she's standing here talking to the guy, and I'm on a bench here, and Joel's behind her, and this guy, this is not proportionate because obviously the camera's not as big as her body, and I draw the gun slowly and aim off camera, and there's supposed to be nothing in there. So she's not protecting herself and standing off. I'm shooting in a direction, and everybody is supposed to be to that side of the camera. There's nobody in my line. Nobody. And so when I shoot the gun, so in the rehearsal, I'm assuming I have an empty gun, and the gun goes off. She's right in front of me. Mm -hmm. She's as far from me as I am from between, a difference between maybe you and the door. Okay. Or so pretty close thing. proximity. It was, they're very, it was a very tight shot. Okay. The shot was here. Of me, not of me, it's of me pulling the gun slowly, so they turn cock. Okay. And she's right there, vulnerable, in a position she wouldn't ordinarily be if we were shooting, and, she, and this thing, boom, yep. she hits the ground. Okay. All right, I'm going to back you up just a little bit, okay? Yeah. How long have you been on set? I arrived uh, Monday the 11th. Okay. And started my fittings, and my, they were already were shooting the week before. And the 11th of October? Monday the 11th, I flew in from New York. I flew from New York to Denver, Denver to Albuquerque, because there are no direct flights here, and then drove from Albuquerque to here. Okay. Rehearsed and fitted and did all my preparatory stuff. But that was in October, correct? That was Tuesday the 12th, yeah. I flew on the 11th, rehearsed on the 12th, started shooting the 13th, Wednesday the 13th. As well. Okay. We shoot a Wednesday through Sunday schedule. We're off Monday, Tuesday. 
So the entire time you've been on set, have you seen the same armor and working with you guys? Everybody. How many people are on her crew? Uh, my guess is that what I witness is three. Okay. All young women. Hannah and two other women. All right. And very often they're tasked with me because we're not shooting every day, guns, we're not, there's no armaments every day. They dress me with my holster, my knife. We're, the, the film is set in 1888, so I'm armed with the classic weaponry of the cowboy era. Okay. And so they would make sure I was dressed properly. You know, 80, 85% of their task is to make sure I'm dressed with everything properly. The armorers? The armorers. Or just? The, well, the armorers, wardrobe doesn't necessarily, well, they sometimes trade back and forth, but wardrobe doesn't necessarily deal with my holster. Okay. And, and the knife, because that's a prop. The armorer, Hannah, and her team, they dealt with me being knifed and that being lashed properly, so it looks proper. Okay. And the uh, uh, holster. Okay. And... So wardrobe as much as it was props, as much as it was armaments. Do you know Hannah's last name? No. Do you know what she looks like? Or can you describe yeah, uh, what she looks like? Multicolored hair, glasses, uh, you know, uh, not too tall. Everyone knows her pretty well because her father is a very famous armaments guy. He's a guy that did guns in movies for decades. He's very well known. Okay. She's the daughter of this famous gun guy, movie gun guy. And what about the other girls in her crew? I don't remember their names. Okay. Do you know what they look like? A blonde, thin, not too short, you know, kind of medium height, and brunette, someone on the shorter side, maybe the same height as Hannah, brunette, and, uh, and also, there's a there's you go back and forth between. They're wearing a mask most of the time on set in right. order to do that. But I've seen them with their masks off. Okay. All right. What time did you guys start today? I don't know what time they started. I came in slightly later because they had a couple of shots without me in the morning. So I came in at uh, I guess I arrived there at like about quarter to eight. Okay. Normally I'm there at like six thirty. All right. And then anything. Abnormal in the day. Who handed, or should I say, who handed you your weapon in the day? Hannah. Hannah did. Okay. And physically handed or put it in the holster? Handed it to me. Okay. She would show me the gun. Okay. Or she'd say, cold, cold gun. She'd say, test it or some language to indicate as she handed me the gun that it was fine. And she said, do you want to check? Okay. And I always didn't want to insult her. I said, because we never had a problem. Yeah. And I said, oh, I'm good. So, and the first AD very often will ask, Periodically, he'll say, let me check. Okay. And they'll have two people check for this very reason that we don't have any, fla forget about live rounds of bullets, that we have any flash rounds in the gun while we're rehearsing. Because if someone wants to indicate, and, and they're, they're not thinking, they pull the trigger on the gun, you just hear the hammer, the, 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 the dead sound of the hammer hitting, and, and you have no flash rounds at all in there for the rehearsal. The, the, re the rehearsal gun should be empty. Okay. And, 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 and as I said, for the two weeks I've been shooting, it has been empty. We haven't had one problem. But and you ha have you physically checked that or just by her telling you? She announces to me that it's, that, it's, that it's clean. Okay. She'll say, cold gun, we rehearse. Then when she's done, she takes the gun, goes off to a corner. She has a kit, like a zip fanny pack with her uh, elements in there. She puts the flash rounds in there. She'll say, you know, uh, uh, quarter load. She it's, 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 it's a lower sound. Or she'll say, full load. If I'm shooting, if you're the crew and you're shooting me close, even if I said the full load, it is rather loud. It's very loud. Okay. She's always announcing what's going to happen. All right. She's been very good about that. So have you guys, backtracking a little bit on this, um, you know, because she's telling you what's in these guns, um, have you guys been practicing with those quarter loads, the full loads, all that through the past couple of weeks? Or have you shot with them? I came in on Tuesday. That's what I did Tuesday. Okay. The 12th. I came to the ranch, rode the horse, and just got used to that. And because uh, they have a double who really rides in the distance, they're really fast. And all the athleticism you see me on the horse, and they could do a watch out of another guy riding was a horse. Okay. Quite a crew of them. So today was not the first day that. No, I shot um, on Tuesday the 12th with the uh, uh, the uh, Henry, the, the, the lever. You know, arm action lever, or the lever action rifle, okay. and the pistol. I just shot both. Okay. And, all right, moving back forward. What time did you guys break for lunch today? Usually, I think today was broke at 1230. Okay. And who took the weapon at that time? Hannah. Physically took it Always from does. you? 
Rarely do the other ladies, the two other women, handle the pistol that we're, that's live shooting in the scene. As I said, I have the Henry in my hand as a prop. I'd be running through the scene, but no, no bullets, nothing. When they'd say cut, I could hand it to the blonde girl. Okay. okay. But whenever we were interacting with somebody where rounds were going to go in the gun, you would have flash rounds in the scene. We shot flash rounds. It was only Hannah. Okay. Only. With her fanny pack with the rounds in there, her equipment. Okay. Um, do you know what time you guys got back from lunch? My guess is 1.30 by the time we all get back to the set up. Uh, there's a base camp and there's the set. So we go to the base camp for lunch, then we just drive back. Get their wardrobe touched up, get their hair touched up, and make up whatever we do, and then we're on set. We put about an hour all in before we go back on the set. Okay. And was Hannah the one to physically hand you the gun at that yes. point? Okay. Um, during the time that you had it, was it ever handed off to anybody else? No. Okay. Did you see? where she got the gun from? No. Okay. Um, she has a station somewhere with all her stuff. Okay. The, the elements and the gun, and a cu couple different guns. Guns for the other actors, and she handles all the guns. Is anybody else allowed in that area? I don't know, but I know that on this, I, I've never seen anything that was out of the ordinary. She has like a, sometimes they have a, a cart, like almost like a hospital catering, you know, where there's like a big plastic tray, a dark plastic tray, okay. with two levels and wheels. Um, I think that's what she has, but many of the departments have that, and uh, on that tray would be her, or something like that, I don't recall what exactly hers was like, but they have a station that they bring to the set okay. for her to put all of her stuff, and uh, uh, if the weather is cooperative and sometimes they put it under a tent, if it's, it looks like it might rain and anything to damage the property, but uh, she has a little place she would go to. And I think she has a truck where she stores it. When they wrap, everything goes into a truck and she takes off with it. It's her responsibility to, to uh, secure the prop weapons. Everything in there? Okay. Which are real guns. Real guns. Um, can you actually describe the gun to me? Uh, it's a Colt, a period Colt. Uh, in our emails back and forth when we were prepping the film, she showed me just a couple different styles of guns. This is not a big budget movie, so we didn't have a lot of choices. You know, you, 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 she showed you three or four choices. I said, give me the biggest gun you've got. Okay. And, uh, uh, and so I didn't, uh, uh, she showed me different guns uh, by email and different knives by email, uh, cruder knives that were made for, for, for like someone fashioned the handle out of like L corn or things like that. I took a traditional knife, a leather strap, a handle. Um, we went back and forth about the holster and the material and uh, we just had a, a relatively brief conversation. I, I'm having made a lot of movies. I know I have not to stress them out about the budget. When she shows me something, I try to make that work. And so uh, she showed. I said, "Just give me the big Colt. We're done." And okay. then on that Tuesday, the 12th, I came and shot that gun. Okay. What color is it? Uh, I believe it's a brown handle because she showed me two of the larger Colts. One had a cherry-colored handle, and one had a brown handle. And I chose the brown handle. You didn't want the cherry. I can show you my emails and my. <laughs> The chair was too shiny. Ah, okay. That character is a little bit in the retirement side of his career. So. Ah. He's a retired bank robber. I'd say out in the Wild West, chair yeah, might not be that. <laughs> well, you always have people in films. I mean, they go to an extensive extent. You wouldn't believe some films if they have the budget, the details you go into. Of all the things you wear, jewelry, hats, watches, guns, cars. I mean, there's people sit down. I mean, I've made a lot of films. And the films that have bigger budgets, you could spend a whole week going to rehearsal, reading with the director, the writer goes and rewrites, they listen to how the dialogue sounds, and then once you're done rehearsing the text with the director, the producers, and the writer, when you're done reading, they'll go make amendments, when they hear it come out of your mouth, they'll go, let's change that line. The way Bob says that, and then they go, they go, then you go right to wardrobe, props, you go do a lot of stuff. Okay. All right, so you get back from lunch, get ready. She hands you the gun. Um, was this inside or outside? We're inside the church. The okay. church set. And was it the first rehearsal that the incident happened? Yeah, I believe so, because we talked about, as we were going to lunch, we're always talking about what's next. Okay. So as we were rehearsing scenes, he said, now I want to do a scene where 
uh, we'd done other shots before lunch. He said, when we come back from lunch, we'll do this. And he said, I want you to pull it out and show me. Because I was showing him what I thought was the best angle, to see the glint of the gun under my coat. Because you want the scene to work, the shot to work. So where the holster's here, the gun is here, my coat comes around, and I held my hand like it was like I was just cupping my hands, like I was just resting. Okay. And I showed him in the rehearsal. So when we came back after lunch, we rehearsed for the camera, and I took the gun. I really, I'm showing him, I'm going, I'm going to go like this, like this, like this. Cock and turn, bang, it went off. The first time. Okay, so it was, it was your it was first time after first lunch. The first time that we were shooting that shot, that we were rehearsing for that shot. Okay. That camera shot. Um, and you may not, if you don't know, that's <clears> fine. <throat> Did you happen to see, so obviously you guys left from that upper, your upper shooting area to go have lunch. Or did you eat lunch up there? No, we always go back to the base camp for lunch. Okay. For the stage. Yeah, did the, stage. the armorers, or did you see the armorers go down? No. No. Nor would I. Okay. Yeah. Makes well, sense. Once they're gone, I'm gone. Okay. Do You're people okay. stay up on set, or does everybody go down? Well, there are many people who will forego lunch. Okay. Not, I say that back, not many. There are some who will forego lunch because they have work to do. Someone will hold them a plate. Someone will they'll bring their own lunch. They just many people they uh, um, they make sacrifices because of their pride for their department. Mm -hmm. They may sit there and say, "I think I need to paint that wall and touch up that wall. I think I need to distress those boots." They all have work to do, mm -hmm. and very often a small number of people will stay up top while we drive down from the set to the base camp. The caterer is there and eat, but maybe a modest number of people stay up there. Okay. All right, and then I just want to clarify, really, um, I know you're drawing something. All right, so when you had pulled out the gun, obviously you were not at the cameraman, but you had identified there were two people there. Can you tell me who those people were? My recollection is that the operator was there. He's a steady cam operator. Okay. He's a man who there's either a camera on sticks that's stationary, okay. or there's a man who operates a steady cam that moves. The camera operator was there behind the camera, and she was to his right. And who is she? That's the one I'm asking Helena, about. Helena, the, the cinematographer. Okay. The camera director. And she was right next to the cameraman. And she was to his right, to my left. And who was behind her? Joel. And he is? The director of the movie. Okay. Can you recall who exactly was inside at the time no. of the incident? Uh, or Dave, anyone else Dave that you Halls, can? Okay. The first AD, he's in charge of the crew. The first assistant director is the man who's like the foreman of the set. He's in charge of all the grips, all the, all the crew. Okay. Electric, cable. Do you know his name? Manager, Dave Wall, the Dave Halls. Okay, that's Dave. Got and it. Dave Halls is always there. Uh, uh, Helena, Joel, me, the operator, an assistant camera person. A script supervisor, a woman who sits in the corner in some strategic position to take notes on all the action of the tape so you can match. If one day you're doing a scene and you sit there and go, what is your first name? Samantha. Samantha. Like, Samantha, you know, it's really important that you and I uh, drink, 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 uh, get together and talk about that case. You drink, when did you, she makes notes so we match every take. That's called continuity. That woman who does continuity, she's always there watching. She was in the room. Okay. She's an older woman, like in her 60s, maybe with, uh, um, you know, that color, blonde hair, maybe, or brown hair. But she, I forget her name now, but she's, so there's a group of people that are always there for every shot, even if you're in a kind of a cramped interior. This set of this church is not large. So then the rest of the crew's outside. And that side was a limited number of people, maybe eight, nine, I don't remember. Okay. I, I know that every time we do a shot, those people are always on the set. Camera, assistant camera, cinematographer, director, first AD, script. Okay, so not too many. Very few. Do you think that any part of this incident that occurred was intentional? Well, I, I can only say this, which is, and it was to me, to place a bullet and position a bullet that is a live round to make sure that that bullet is in the chamber. If I were to squeeze the trigger in a rehearsal that that bullet came out, someone has to have extraordinary access to that weaponry to do that. I can't imagine somebody walked around with a round that was a 45 caliber round 
She was seeing other people on the set were speculating that if it was a 45 caliber round, she'd be dead. It would have blown a big hole in her. And so we're wondering, was the projectile that went in her some foreign material stuck and it was an accident, it was a flash round, and something came out of the barrel. They didn't check. They always check. But... But to your experience with these armorers and... I've never and... heard anything like this in my life, ever. Okay. I've never heard of a projectile coming out of a prop gun that went through a person's body, and regardless of her being a smaller woman. The, the, the bullet went in here, I'm told, went in here, came out here, her shoulder or whatever, and went into his body and buried I've never heard of that in my life. I don't know of any projectile in a gun, in a flash prop gun that could accomplish that. Now, if somebody put a live round in there accidentally, see, a very important question for Hannah is, do, have you ever co-mingled live rounds with theatrical rounds in your kit? Because they're forbidden to do that. Mm -hmm. According to the, the, the union rules and the safety rules for all the unions, you're not allowed to do that because of the fear of what would happen that you co-mingle. So whether someone accidentally, and I can't even imagine this, deliberately placed a live round in that gun, uh, I've never, never, never heard of that in my life, and I, I don't know anything about what happened, but all I know is when I... See, see, the other thing about this is, in a live round, you'd have a recoil, mm -hmm. usually. When I shot that gun and it went off, I didn't shoot it, when it went off, um, I didn't intend for it to, 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 for what happened to happen. When that happens is, you know, I'm always told, but because I'm not a gun person, I don't have a gun, they've always told me, they asked me to simulate the recoil. When I shoot the Colt, which is a big gun, 45 caliber bullet, they always teach me when we should be go action. I go, get back here, boom, and they make me take my hand and go, boom, and have the kick. Because mm -hmm. there's no kick in a flash round. Okay. And when I this happened, I don't recall there being any kick either. That's important. Okay. Are you? Ex I know you said you don't own a gun, but are you experienced with shooting guns? Only as much as actors have to be experienced. Okay, which is normally not real well, bullets. I mean, like, if you do a movie, safety with weapons is is primary. You go off with people. You can walk with armaments people to ranges. I've gone to ranges in Arizona where we shot a lot of guns in a movie many years ago. And uh, you go to a range and you shoot for a few hours. And they teach you how to shoot shotguns, uh, oh, oh, Walther, uh, uh, different you know, little small guns, uh, James Bond guns, big guns, Uzis, machine guns. Whatever you're using, they make you go and rehearse for hours with all them. day. Okay. Yeah, well, they're very safety conscious, as they have been here. They've been very safety conscious here throughout. That's what puzzles me. Well, and that's, I, yeah, and I guess that's more like the question that I'm trying to get at is, you, do you think someone would deliberately do this? I can't imagine who would. Okay. Now, people have said, you know, that six people got fired from the crew yesterday because they said that the, you know, the union, I don't want to get into a long diatribe about this, but the union the International Association of Theatrical Stage Employees, IATSE is their name. IATSE is the union that controls all the actors. The Directors Guild controls the director, the Screen Actors Guild controls the director, but all of the crew are controlled by a contract in which those people voted to go on strike against the major studios, the major networks, the major streaming services, but not the independent film community. In fact, the IATSE rep for the New Mexico contract, because every state has different contracts, was instructed by his bosses in L.A. He said, don't go on strike. The strike is against the majors, not against the indie people. And in the indie films, there's six different tiers, I believe, in terms of the contract, how much they're paid. Okay. A bunch of people on the set walked off anyway, even though they were told not to, to, to strike. They, they struck, and they left. And that was yesterday. That was yesterday. That was their last day. And yeah, then the question becomes, I mean, somebody said, would, did, would one of them do I, I don't. I don't even know. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Well, and I was because that was mentioned to me is that it sounded like it was most of the camera crew that walked off set yes. um, yesterday and quit, and maybe it, they got fired because they walked off. Um, so the other thing is that the two major people, like you said, the director, um, those are the ones who got hurt. So with the camera crew and them quitting, and then your director getting injured as well as um, Helena, but you don't think there's anybody that had any anger towards them or anything that would want to disrupt the film? I don't know the, the details. I know that one guy, whose name I'm forgetting, he was a very heavy set guy. Okay. He was a very, and lovely to me. And he walked up to me and he said, 
thank you for the things you posted on social media in support of the IATSE strike. And he said, I'd like to talk to you privately. Because he said, because I've got some of my guys sleeping in their car. Mm -hmm. Many of the crew here, because there's shooting in Albuquerque and Santa Fe, or Albuquerque based, they live there. So the drive time uh, is kind of common knowledge in the business that the, uh, the unions in New Mexico signed very bad deals in order to attract the movie shooting here. They wanted to grow the, the, the crew uh, uh, base here. So they signed the deal that wasn't a good deal, and that gave them a 60-mile commute radius. So that means if you live within 60 miles of the set, mm -hmm. you come to work, you don't get paid any, you have to drive home, they don't hotel you. They don't know in New York, it's 30 miles, and they have to put you up in a hotel and give you gas money, and there's a whole other complicated contract in the, in the more um, expensive markets. Here, this guy would tell me, he turned to me, he goes, my guys are sleeping in their car. And I went to the AD and the producers, and I asked him, what's up with that? He said, they knew what the contract was. We signed the IATSE contract in New Mexico. And then in the middle of shooting, they decided they wanted to rewrite their deal. They said, put us up in hotels. Now, if you put the camera crew up in a hotel, all the other crafts are going to ask you to put them in a hotel. We don't have the budget for that. Yeah. That could be seventy five, eighty thousand dollars know $80,000. Who was that man? Who? Do you, the one you <clears> said that came I forget, Like I said, I forget his name. Okay. But anybody there can tell you who the big heavy set guy was, who was on the crew that quit yesterday. He didn't come to work today. Okay. But my point is, is that if I'm standing there in a rehearsal, mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself, could someone actually believe that in the rehearsal I would actually aim the gun and hit those two people? That's far-fetched. Or do they want just somebody to get hit? Or, I keep telling myself more likely, was it an accident? Where there was a large quarter load is makes noise, but it's a, kind of a puff compared. But a half load could shoot a projectile if something was stuck in the barrel. And like I said, the thing that is, I think, going to answer all your questions is, what's in Joel's shoulder? Mm -hmm. Is it a rock or is it a bullet? Uh, I could actually show that to you. What? what was in his shoulder. We did did they take out. it out? So you being on set for so many years, like you said, you have you ever seen, you, you said you've never seen anything come out before. I've so never seen, you, no, I've never seen a projectile come out. No, right. No. So, so, But do you know what the bullets look like that? Would it have looked something like this if anything did ever come out of something? Does that make okay, sense? Okay, no, 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 okay. So, okay, let's backtrack a little bit. Hold on. That's a bullet. Mm -hmm. That's a bullet. So right. as I suspected, somebody put a live round in the gun. If that's a bullet that was pulled out of his shoulder, then someone loaded a live round into the gun I was holding. So now, let me ask you, did you see the rounds that were in the gun? No. Have you seen, throughout the whole time on set, have you seen what they look like? I've watched her load and reload the gun many times, many times. Have you seen the bullets themselves? Well, meaning yes, meaning you see um, sometimes the head is the casing, and the head is a pinched, it almost looks like a dumpling. Mm -hmm. It's closed at the top. There is no piece. And you put the cosmetic round in when you know you're going to see if I hold the gun, if I say to you, what is your first name again? Alex. If I say to you, Alex, don't you move a muscle, darling, I'm going to blow you. And you and the camera shoots me. You want to see the material in the cylinder, the cosmetic clay-based non-bullet round. So can you describe to me what those clay-based rounds look like? They look like a bullet. What colors? They're, they're, they're gray. They look exactly like a bullet. Brass head and, and a brass base packed with something, I'm assuming, and the uh, um, and then the uh, the head to look like a bullet. So cosmetically, you see that in the cylinder. The other rounds you shoot have a, it's the it's the base with the pin. This comes up, and this comes up. And it's a round like this. And if you look at the top, if you're looking down at the bullet, with the, with the, with the uh, not the pin down here, the top of it, if you look at it, it's folded in like a, like almost like yeah, a. Yeah, it's like, like a. a yeah, like a dump. Like a pinched it's like, type. It's exactly, it's like a folded up thing, and the char and all that does is go boom. So if There's I no projectile there. if I showed you a couple rounds, would you be able to tell me if they're the ones that look like they were on set? Uh, probably, if I, I, I think I could probably tell you which were the rounds that were put in cosmetic. Okay. And the, which were the rounds that were the flash rounds? All right. Can you just a second? Me, I'm very upset right now. I know. But if I you don't mind me saying so, please take, don't forget my, my, my very, this is, that's what can I have to show you. 